Hey guys, Lawrence here. And Josh. And today we're previewing some of the best upcoming indies for 2015. We say some because there were just way too many games to choose from. So if you missed any of your favourites, try not to be too down and please enjoy the video. A Sony exclusive, Rhyme is an open world adventure game set on an impressively large island. Its self shaded art has been compared to that of Wind Waker and its isolation in such a large and mysterious world to Eco and Journey so not the shabbiest of comparisons. The development team includes the original creator of the Mega Man character, the side-scroller platforming is classic Mega Man, and the character pretty much looks like Mega Man. Mighty No. 9 is the true spiritual sequel to Mega Man, funded by the series' loyal fans on Kickstarter. Capybara's follow-up to Super Time Force was concealed in mystery, but what we do know is that Below is a much different game. Cappy have described it not as a roguelike, but as a roguelike-like, with a focus on exploration. Still, the art and music are enough to pique our interest. Hyper Light Drifter was the fairy tale Kickstarter story of 2013. It asked for $27,000 and got $645,000 instead. Maybe it was the sprite animations, the beautiful colours, or the unique weapons. Regardless, people took to this game. With possibly the coolest name in video game history, Hyper Light Drifter is sure to be a hit. Four years in the making, Ori in the Blind Forest is a Metroidvania with scenes so stunning they look like they were hand drawn. The emotional coming of age story that sees a lost child raised by a kind stranger, combined with the forest setting, is giving us the Jungle Book vibes and adding to our anticipation. The Witness looks pretty good. It's got some nice landscapes and some puzzles that would probably be fun to solve. And if you wanted to know, it's also made by that guy who made that game called Braid. So make of that what you will. Probably unimportant. Isolated in the wilderness, unexplainable things begin to happen to a lookout, and his only connection to the outside world, a radio service to his supervisor, is seemingly the key to his survival. With vibrant scenic art to complement, Firewatch could be the Ethan Carter of 2015. Hotline Miami 2 Wrong Number appears to be one of the most interesting sequels we've ever seen. Playing on the unreliable renation of the first game, Wrong Number retells the prelude and the aftermath of the original through the eyes of six different characters. It's definitely shaping up as a fitting end to the series. It is arguable that the prevalence of procedurally generated worlds in indies is because it can create the illusion of a larger world with fewer resources. But in No Man's Sky, procedural generation is made to make an infinitely random universe that would take you years to explore. Also, if you've been watching the video with your eyes closed, open them, because graphics. After just being introduced to the wonderful hand-drawn world of Banner Saga last year, we're already getting a chance to return. And after such a cliffhanger, continuing the story will be the priority. It will also be interesting to see how much, if at all, the combat is tweaked considering it was the most divisive feature amongst players. Inside is nearly as monochromatic as its spiritual predecessor and indie favourite Limbo. Again, things are highly interpretive. From the trailer, the world seems to be a creepy mechanical dystopia, and the game appears to run on a strong fear of being detected, as well as a haunting curiosity to find out what exactly is inside. Not in the Woods is a gorgeous character-driven game adventure from Ella Coloco of Aquaria fame and Scott Benson. From what we understand, it's about that point in life where everyone and everything is changing and the future is just so uncertain. It's definitely a niche game, but we're glad that these type of games get to be made. Chiefly the work of 22-year-old Canadian dev Noel Berry, Skytorn invites players to travel through its procedurally generated islands in the sky and dig deep underneath to find forgotten dungeons. For us, it easily draws comparisons to Terraria, but with a seemingly greater playability and a more open world to facilitate exploration. Dear Esther has been called a lot of things from brilliantly haunting to a walking simulator. And the follow-up game from the Chinese room, Everybody's Gone to the Rapture, will surely be just as exclusive in its appeal. However, we must admit that the theme of the Rapture is very intriguing and there will be more interactive elements this time around. Cuphead is a run-and-gun game marvellously styled in the vein of 1930s cartoons. It also draws heavily from the more subversive and surreal cartoons, which is reflected in the zany character designs and bet with the devil story. The game also promises loads of bosses and heavily tweaked and brutal gameplay. Titan Souls is like Pixel Shadow of the Colossus with a daunting twist. There are 25 different Titans to conquer, but only with one hit point and one arrow at your disposal. The arrow can be retrieved, however, and the bosses can be killed in one hit too. The trick is figuring out how to kill them. We only went over the games briefly so as to fit as many as possible in, 
but we will get the chance to talk about them in more depth later in the year in our top 5 and review videos. But hopefully this was a good sneak peek to get you excited for indie gaming in 2015. As always, thanks for watching, I'm Lawrence. And I'm Josh, we'll see you next time here on Indie Former. Do that again. And today we're showing you some of the day we and today we're previewing some nice shirt. I like the shirt. Some of the nice camera. Looks nice. Give it a jumper. No, 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 no.